Hey everybody, uh, yes, uh, nice to see you all here today and thanks for having me uh, at uh, Nordic Game Jam this year. Uh, the first time I was here was actually 10 years ago uh, when, I, when I was just starting out myself, so it feels really nice to uh, celebrate like an anniversary uh, back here. Uh, what we're first going to do is the thing that uh, uh, we always should do when we start recording, because I'm going to do a little bit of recording for later. Uh, so what we need is a sync clap. So um, I'm basically going to uh, just hold up my uh, voice and they're like one, two, and we all clap together. And I'll just check if we got the right levels, right? So on the one, two, and then we clap. Everyone ready? One, two. Okay, let me try it one more time. It's really good, by the way. But I think we can do it a little bit louder, right? And there were people up there that was a little bit off, I think. <laughs> Yeah. One, two. Wow, that's good. All right, thanks so much. Uh, yes, my name is Martin, uh, and I work with uh, game audio for Knock Knock. And uh, this is me and the other people at Knock Knock. That's Ali, the, the, the goblin under the leaves, and Uda in the light. She's the tidy one and does all the, the smart stuff. And I'm uh, a little bit taller and a bit in the background and chaotic. Uh, I do sound design and I uh, sometimes compose and I also work a bunch with implementation which sometimes is a bit of programming but since I'm not really that good with that it's mostly just middleware like fmod and these kind of magical tools that allows me to do magic without knowing how much to coding. I worked about, for about 10 years, uh, I've done about 30 different games give or take 5 uh, and uh, mostly been doing indie games. Uh, the few times I've tried something different it's been a bit weird because I don't really know how to be uh, part of a team, which means I could probably never join uh, big studios like AAA games because I don't know how to work with people if they do the same thing as me. Uh, so Indie Games is fine, it's like small teams, um, I, I enjoy that. Uh, we are going to have a quite basic talk today. I'm going to do a little bit of, uh, uh, little bit of uh, sound design and I'm going to also do a little bit of talking about what is the different kind of things uh, you can do uh, as you're jamming for the first time. So if you haven't really jammed before, if you're interested or trying to kind of jam, uh, we're going to go through these little things and we're going to have it later for those who want to take a picture of it, with also the context of what different things is. Uh, in all essence, what we do when we do audio for games is uh, I see us as having a conversation. Like uh, audio or games especially is a non-linear art form, which is uh, quite cool because we can basically have a discussion or a conversation between uh, between the player and the the, uh, the, the person making um, the thing, which basically means that you know if you're working with music, uh, you are having um, the consideration of what you're going to do if the player goes to this beautiful vista and they see this great uh, fountain of a mountain and it's the rainbow above it and you start the music and it's beautiful. But the player now notices some mushrooms, so they don't really notice that. They go over here and they start plucking, and they are harvesting these mushrooms. And the player maybe doesn't understand why these mushrooms are feeling majestic. Uh, and you need to figure out, should we be okay with these mushrooms maybe being like the core of the majestic uh, uh, music? Or should we maybe like tone the music down and maybe wait to restart it or kind of fade it in if they look back again? Uh, and. Um, and I, and I really like this, uh, and it's still something that I learn a lot from each. Uh, they just kind of trying to anticipate what do people do uh, with the games I make, and how do I respond to when they do things that <laughs> I don't anticipate. Uh, it's also something that I really like about it, is working with others. Uh, I'm not really good at driving myself, so it's really nice to have other people that are having a vision and a passion, and I can join and help out with the meager thing I can. It's also like a bunch of different things. And I think for most of you joining and wanting to do game audio, uh, a, lot of this, uh, a lot of this is something you don't need to think too much about. But it, game audio touches on everything that is the audio aspect, which is 50% you know, of what you perceive if you play a game. We do uh, you know, uh, voice audio, uh, voice acting. We do producing of voice acting. We, uh, we uh, doctor the scripts, sound design. We work on implementation. That's kind of where it all comes together. We do a lot of QA to make sure that things sound good, uh, that there's no bugs, that things just generally are uh, cohesive. And at the end, we just make sure that it's uh, according to a bunch of standards that are 
set in a way of having like a good dynamic range and these kind of things. And it's, uh, it's a lot of uh, different uh, ways to do game audio, and especially in bigger companies. Uh, there's a lot of people who are only doing, for instance, uh, traveling to the desert to recording footsteps for two months, then they go to uh, like the salt desert to do foot recordings for two months and these kind of things. We also have a lot of fun words. Uh, and it's kind of a little bit of on, on, on the topic, if I said that word right, but it's basically uh, how to communicate with words that don't, doesn't really have, um, have uh, words. Uh, so we're inventing words. And for instance, we need to do that because uh, if you're, for instance, going to look for sounds, and uh, if we need a crowd murmur, then I know that, okay, a crowd murmur is called a walla, so I go and search for walla, uh, and here is a bunch of walla, and maybe we can even hear it. Let's see now. Gonna take, no, we can't hear it. Um, but yeah, so we're basically having sta a lot of standards and a lot of different uh, words for different uh, terminology. What we're going back to now is uh, the nonlinear part, though. And uh, with that, I also want to know a little bit of who uh, here are doing what. Uh, but we're not going to do a, uh, uh, like a hands up thing. We're going to do like an interpretive sound. So of course, if you're doing, uh, if you are here for doing, uh, I mean, everyone is probably going to, or many are going to do uh, computers, right? So a, lot, so a lot of keyboard typing. But let's keep that if you do programming, maybe. Uh, but let's say if you're an artist, maybe do like a whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And uh, if you're a producer, I don't know. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to know like, um, how many here is an artist or want to do artist stuff? Maybe if you like paint splatters on a canvas, can we have that? Okay. How many are doing programming? How many programmers will, how will you sound like when you do programming and you're frustrated? <laughs> no cursing. Um, and then, uh, yeah, what about, uh, how many are here to do sound design? <laughs> <laughs> Pew! Uh, yeah, let's see, your producers? You're kind of like the people who are sitting up front and like, we need to make this game happen today. Uh, anyone? <laughs> so producers are right, 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 right. Uh, what about uh, designers, like pure just game designers? <laughs> it's like a susurrus of wind through the leaves. It's beautiful. Like the sign, it's uh, felt, it's not heard. Thank you. Cool. With this in mind, we're going to revisit. And thank you all for uh, the performances. Uh, I'm going to show a few like examples of the different things that uh, that we do. Uh, for instance, uh, what I like to do the most, and that's why I want to start with, is a user interface sounds, which is quite abstract and quite weird and quite random. Uh, which is, I like to do weird and random stuff. So the kind of sounds that you is uh, mostly tied to UI these days. And it's, uh, what's really nice about them is like they can tell, tell you a lot of things about the interaction you're doing. And like, for instance, if you're applying something, it should feel like, oh, you did the choice. That's good on you. You, you selected that key binding. Well done, you know, or, oh, you reset. It's good. It's good. Now it's, it's safe. It's back to normal. And that you toss that in the trash bag and it's like, it's, now it's clean again uh, or something like that. So uh, it, it says a lot of things. And the nice thing about UI sounds is that people don't really notice it or think about it too much. So you can kind of do whatever you want, and, and people will just think that that's a, that's a cool button to click, I don't know why. Then of course we have ambience.
the good thing about ambience is that like UI people don't necessarily think too much about it. So you can kind of do whatever you want without people really minding your business. Like they will generally tell you if something is like hurting their ears or, but if, even if the ambience is not playing, people probably won't think about it. So you're going to be fine. Uh, to consider it a bonus if it <laughs> makes it in by the end of the jam because all are gonna, you're just going to be working to get the game running in any case. Uh, then we have music. Music is what people actually are listening to a lot and they will ma make sure that if they don't like the music they will tell you loudly. So I generally don't do music. So that was music for those who hasn't heard about it before. Um, I think the, for those of you who want to try this for the first time, or those of you who are, uh, I, this is de de definitely for those who have, hasn't done sound before, I, I generally try to be creative with these three things, and it's, I think it's a, possible to apply this for whatever you do. But basically by, uh, by framing what I'm trying to achieve and what is like within, this, within the kind of stylistic and um, realistic possibilities of what it should what it could look like or sound like I kind of, kind of consider that framing you know the experience of uh, knowing when you found the right thing to and how to use it in and exploration where you're just basically digging around like an archaeologist and you don't really know what you're going to find uh, and by framing I, I just wanted to show like an example of this game I worked on called Hidden Folks and uh, I think the frame there was uh, the framing there is basically let's just use mouth sounds for the game. And uh, all the sounds to hear, all the music is just mouth sounds. And I mean, the good thing about uh, having uh, establishing a frame uh, is that you can kind of offset a lot of if you don't have much experience by finding out like if you're going to make something narrow, like just use your mouth, for instance, you know that you can't really do that much wrong. Uh, if you're saying like my frame is going to be kind of sci-fi 80s, it, it, it needs much more expertise to kind of know what is the sound of sci-fi 80s sounds, right? But everyone knows like if you make a mouth sounds, that kind of sounds like a mouth, but even, even if you try to make like, make um, the sound of what is the sound of a seagull, like a pelican throwing up a, a Game Boy, then it's kind of like a like something like that. And people will see the action and they will kind of understand what it is and they will kind of understand, oh yeah, it sounds like hidden folks because it's, it's the sound of a voice. So framing is basically just a very elaborate and like a very easy tool for just knowing, does this fit with what I'm trying to uh, do? Like another, uh, whoops. Uh, like another another way to do an easy frame is like you know if you're making a, a eight bit like Mario NES type of game, it's also very easy to uh, use something like this, which is called JFXR, uh, where you can go to and just kind of generate your own sounds. You can do like random. Uh, sorry, I'm just gonna take a little bit down, but. This is just like a very good site for just like figuring out if you don't really know how to craft sounds that sound like uh, uh, chippy sounds. You can go here and you can kind of find out like, okay, I need power up sounds. And this one is good and you can kind of also do a bunch of things like, oh, this was, the last one is good, but I need variations of it. Or maybe not. It's also useful if you're like, oh, this is a pretty good, good thing, but it's not quite there. Um, but yeah, uh, this is definitely something that is very, uh, uh, very handy. Uh, let's see now. Okay, and we're going to do the next thing, and then we're back to the nonlinear bits, and I'm going to check if the recorder is still running because sometimes they run out of battery. Uh, and I want you all to partake in a few more things. And I'm basically just going to ask uh, a few things. Like uh, we did a clap. Uh, 
can we do like three claps in succession? So we'll do like a one, two, and we're like pow, 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 something like that, right? Are you ready? Okay, one more. Are you ready? Yes. Can you make, get like a yeah? One, two. Yeah. Okay, then we do the clapping. One, two. <laughs> one more time. One, <laughs> one, two. And then I want everyone to like stomp a little bit with their feet. Not enough to break the floor, but like. Thank you. And then uh, I want you all to do like, you know, you know like the sound of a clucking of, uh, of the, the river, like. Okay, and now we're going to like a dark stormy night in Norway, uh, up, up north, and it's the wind and it's creaking and oh, and the ocean is far off in the distance and, and the barn is almost falling down. And is there a monster out there? You don't know. But like, like everyone find your voice within that kind of chaotic evening, right? Thank you. And then uh, we're going to do like a little thing called, uh, well, it's, it's, a, it's a horror movie. And it's basically like called, from a horror movie called The Grudge, where they did this thing like a, uh, Cool. Thank you. Um, I think that's going to be enough, right? Like, and, par and part of this point is also like, the experience point is trying new things and, uh, and trying out to um, learn things. And uh, I, I, uh, <laughs> it, it's fun to stand in front of people and get them to do a lot of sounds. Uh, actually, we should do one more. Uh, and, it, and I will tell you at the end of things, but we should do like a little huzzah, like a crowd where people are like cheering. And uh, like, for instance, you, you, you just uh, got first place and everyone is happy for that. So could we have a little bit of cheering at, th at three? Like one, two. <laughs> And then a little bit longer, like about 10 seconds, and then you can start to start to die out, right? <laughs> One, two. <laughs> but then something bad happens, and you're not happy. So like, let's do like 10 seconds of booing, right? OK, One, two. <laughs> Good. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, that's good. Then we're going to mix it all together. So now I'm. Um, uh, this is like a very nice thing that I use a lot because I, I have this one. This is a recorder. Uh, it's it's quite cheap, but uh, everyone has a phone, uh, which is cheaper, and they mostly have good uh, good microphones. So uh, for a lot of you who are just wanting to do something uh, and don't really uh, know really. You don't want to go out and buy like a thousand corners microphone. You can just kind of use your phone and kind of see a little bit of what happens. And uh, right now, I'm not really sure what I put up there. Uh, it's, uh, it's definitely a sound of you. So I'm also going to do this thing where I cheat a little bit and add a few sounds of things I know is good. Like, for instance, the sound of. Oh, cool. And then I'm going to also upload that into the thing. Mm. If there's any questions, by the way, you can just ask them. But it's also going to be quite loud soon. So, mm. OK, so the cool thing about um, using a phone is like now I just basically just upload it to Dropbox. I think most, most of you kind of know how to do that setup and or have send it to your email or something. The best the most important thing is just having a phone that can have an app that can record that you can send to your computer. And then now you have a computer which is just kind of standard. Ready? Okay, one more. Are you ready? Yes. Can you make get like a yeah? One, two. Yeah. Okay, then we do the clap. Okay. So let's look at the yeah. 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 Yeah.
And then maybe like I want to layer it. So, so I think we have some more yang here. So since we have that, I'm just going to do like so we can we can have like a little bit more of yeah. See how that sounds. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was a bit different. <laughs> but it's good. It's layering still. So the the point's still valid, um, which is good. And then we have something funny here. Like, this is really nice. Like, I, I can literally, this is like, uh, for instance, if you want to make like a mouth sound driven game and you want to have a little creak. And then I can kind of just check. Uh, there we go. Yeah, and what I'm showing you now is very basic things. Like if you have, uh, like if you have something like, uh, we're going to go back to later, like an audio, uh, program like I'm using here or similar free ones. You can just basically all do these things. You cut some, something out. You can uh, make uh, a, whole, a long take into one uh, thing instead. So now it's a whole file and you can export a file. Hello. Hello. And that, <coughs> that exists. <coughs> Sorry, that was actually the nuts. That's... <laughs> or you can... You can basically like, there's, there's a bunch of features like you can stretch it so it's weird. Or you can, um, uh, basically what I do a lot is I do this thing that is called granulation, which is a fun tool and you can probably find some uh, free ones, but it's, it's basically takes, now you take all these different things and you cut them in very, very small chunks and you do whatever you want with those chunks and you rearrange them. And it's like mostly, uh, most of what I do is just basically doing some weird recordings like this uh, and I kind of see what happens with them and uh, uh, and kind of take it from there. Like for instance, I was doing this a bit earlier. This is the result of me just kind of sitting around with a uh, distortion unit. So if I take away the distortion, we take away some of the frequencies. <laughs> And then we just uh, kind of take away the, the thing that I put in the beginning, which is just there's a bunch of noise in the background. So then we kind of take it on again. Now it's become this weird like percussive machine loop or something. Uh, and you have the other way where you kind of do uh, we, uh, we did a game where I had to record a baby for five minutes while it was crying and it, it was a good purpose for that, a good reason. But since we had the recording, we, uh, we decided there's a lot of things we want to try to do with this. And uh, I, I want to show the baby screen because it's, it's quite cool with something like a baby crying or anything really. You can make it into something else with uh, quite simple tools. Then we, then we can just basically do, uh, and, and it was like the reason why we were sampling a baby was that we, you were a baby in the game and uh, you were looking for your mother. So, and we tried to make like the, the ambience tell a lot of story about, um, like a, a lot of ambient storytelling. So, uh, we're basically doing, <laughs> Uh, which basically, uh, I didn't know that much about sound design but at that point, and I still don't do, but we found out that if you put a reverb on in anything, it just becomes kind of spaced out at some point.
So yeah, and then we're gonna do this backwards and we have a crying baby again. Um, but I think in general, like, uh, I think the essence of whatever you do when you jam or, or, or work on a, on a project is, is, more, is more about creating things from uh, everywhere you can really. Like if you can go out and stomp around on the wood and it makes a cool creak, you can use that for the game. You, if, if you have a recording of uh, your aunt when they're singing a song to you when you were a kid, uh, if your aunt is okay with it, you can use that and uh, make it into uh, something narrative for your game. Uh, it feels like you're just making collages constantly. Uh, that's what I feel at least. Um, and on that huge detour, let's see where we actually are in the talk right now. Oh, you know what, we don't have that much time left, so I'm just gonna go back here. Uh, yes, jamming, because uh, jamming is cool and uh, uh, for those who are here to jam, uh, like I will jam a little bit, I hope to see you all jamming as well. Uh, there's a bunch of things that I've learned uh, while doing audio for uh, game jams, which is very nice to know. And um, basically, uh, if you can, uh, be at, from the first hour, the first second, even kind of before you don't know what the game is about, kind of look at what, are, what the people around you are doing and what their strengths are. And if, you know, if, if someone wants to make uh, a fluid uh, runner game, uh, it kind of gives you some indication of what the game might need. If they're making a, uh, like a 8-bit Nintendo puzzle game, you kind of know that you should go to the, the um, what's it called again? Yeah, the JFXR. Uh, um, and then uh, kind of have continuous uh, communication uh, with the team or the teams. Like the thing that I noticed is that I don't have coding skills. I don't do much design. I can't draw uh, at all. Uh, so one of the things I need to do is just, uh, usually at uh, game jam, is just I, I get restless and I work with three or four teams usually. Uh, and it's uh, then important to just stay in touch with all the teams and just constantly be like, hey, is there anything new? What are you doing? Are you having meetings? Cool, cool, cool. Let's do this thing. Uh, and then try kind of to develop uh, whatever the sound is going to be, preferably within the first few hours. Like I think everyone else should be doing that. The artist should kind of have some sketches. Uh, and then you should just jump to whoever's implementing. And if it's you, congratulations, that's really cool. Uh, you can probably do it. If you can do it yourself, you'll, you'll have to, you can have a lot of fun and you don't have to stress a lot, which I usually do. Uh, so the next point is like implement early, implement uh, on Friday, implement all the games, uh, all the sounds and all the um, functionality on Saturday latest, because on Sunday, everything is gonna burn and everyone is gonna be very stressed out and nothing's gonna work and, uh, it's always going to be a choice for making the game actually work versus can I have this ambience fade in a little bit earlier, please? Uh, it's only going to take one hour to code. Um, and it's always way easier to, uh, on the last day, if everything is uh, put in and coded in, you can just replace the sounds. So uh, it kind of makes you a little bit freer. Uh, and that's kind of like my takeaways from where, when you're jamming with audio, just being early, have fun, uh, try, try a lot of different things. Um, if you're looking for uh, chip tunes, then you kind of go here. If you are looking for, and now we're going to go back to this thing. If you're looking for organic sounds and you don't really want to record too much, you can go to something like Free Sounds, which does Creative Commons, which means you, you know you should also leave uh, uh, what is it called? Credit the people who made the sounds. Uh, but uh, there you can also go and search for, for instance, voila. You should find a lot of metro station sounds. You should find like. There you go. Uh, power the people indoor. Yeah, this is good. Uh, yeah, and that's, that's just like a, a very nice tool for using as well. Um, otherwise, uh, use Audacity. It's free. It's very, uh, very nice, very simple. You can do 95% of any, everything I can do with uh, my professional tools. And it's, in the end, just more important to know what you're doing anyways. And Audacity is simple, so you can get on it. Adobe Audition, if you tried it, it's great. Ableton, if you like to work on electronic music, fine. And uh, you can use your phone. You can uh, gather people around and just uh, record yourself whispering dark evil voices and put the reverb on it, and it's going to be a very creepy ambience in a dungeon. Um, your voice is, in general, very good as well. Uh, but, uh, yeah, don't really worry too much about getting anything more than you have because it's perfectly fine to do whatever you have with a phone, with a computer, with your voice. Uh, even if someone wants to do like a live sound design thing uh, where someone plays the game and you're sitting on the side with like 
like some, some nuts for when they eat. You eat. Well, that could be fun. I, I would do a shooting rush, so, and if they keep eating, you just, you have a problem, but maybe you can do it. Um, but, um, but yeah, I think that's generally what I wanted to talk about. And we could go into sound design a bit more. I, I have a bunch of things and I, I noticed now that I also missed out a little bit more examples of finding the correct frame. Um, but we can also um, talk a little bit about questions or if you're actually having uh, some thoughts about what you want to do but you don't know how. Or if you want to tell us about a fun sound uh, or a fun story. Is there any more questions? Yes? So I missed the first part of your question. It was static sounds or? Yeah, like something that's not triggered by, let's say, taking out the point, something that just plays in the background. Okay, so tips for that. Um, if, uh, I think the most important thing about audio uh, is uh, try not to annoy. Uh, I always, at least like when I, when I do uh, music, uh, we usually work with loops, right? And I know that I have a good loop going if I, or an ambience, this works with ambiences too. If you have like a 30 second loop of something, uh, 30 seconds to a minute, no more, and you just kind of keep it going, and you need to do something else, like maybe look at your taxes, like I have to do a, a bit later, and if it's half an hour later and that, that loop is still going, and I'm like, oh, wow, it's still playing, I didn't think about that, uh, then you at least know that it's kind of working, it's not grading you in a way, and you kind of already have that uh, figured out for yourself, and then you can kind of just test it in the game and see if anyone else thinks about it. But generally, if you manage to just have it in the background and think about it, uh, it's just fine. Uh, yeah. Anyone else? Uh, yes? Uh, I actually bounce off of that. So when you're making like loopable ambience, um, do you have any recommendations for like uh, making sure that it sounds loopable and there's no like glitch where you can tell where the loops are? Yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Uh, and then the question was, uh, uh, when, you're, when I'm making ambiences or similar things that should loop, is there a way to make them um, loop kind of flawlessly without uh, making uh, it go like, or like, because I mean, uh, back in the old days, I don't even know what that means anymore. Uh, there, were, there was a lot of, <coughs> uh, there was a lot of, uh, uh, when you used like something like an MP3 file, for instance, um, it would have like a, a lot of, like Unity used to have like this thing where you have uh, compressed files, they would have a little gap that they were trying to play, so it would always be like <coughs> when it looped. Uh, most things don't have that now, but uh, I think in general, uh, you want to just make sure that you export it, not as something like uh, MP3, but rather something like uncompressed, whatever that would mean, but like that would typically be AF or WAVE, because then you kind of know that it's, um, it, it doesn't have any much metadata, but it's not that it's big, that big of a problem. And for the, for the rest of it, like kind of making sure that it's uh, uh, loops fine. Uh, the, the way I kind of do it is like, uh, let's kind of take this away. So here we have something, and I made this earlier, that, and I just kind of made it already a loop, right? But let's say <clears throat> you have this one. This one is too short, right? You can also hear it here. That is a loop which you don't really want. Uh, I can maybe take something else. I think I did one with singing, so let's try this one because that's a bit, a bit more apparent. Nope. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yes. Yeah, so now. So, okay, so I'm just taking you through the process now of kind of how to create a loop and maybe this is a bad example, I don't know, but we'll find out because I, right now we can kind of hear. You don't really hear the cuts that, that well, but uh, to kind of uh, make sure that there's no kind of little clicks, you can kind of just cut off a little bit of the ends and you just put it at the front and then it's just like, and then you kind of know that uh, what's here and what's there will go seamlessly between each other because it's the same uh, transition, basically. 
So that's like a really like nice thing that you know this is not going to get a cut because if you zoom right into it, uh, the audio waves uh, will basically be at the same space. So there will never be a <coughs> cut. Sorry, there are the peanuts. Uh, there you go. Yeah. So they basically have the same points, and there will never be like a or like anything like that. Uh, of course, the problem with this that I would say is that it's my voice. Oh. So this one is a problem because like because oh. I kind of go up and down a bit oh. here as well. Oh. Oh. But this, this is actually better because now I can hear the cut. But it's but the tone is more stable, so I would just kind of do like this. This. It's better. Then you can kind of like, uh, and this is like a double, double edged sword because you can maybe do like this thing where you're putting in an echo to kind of have more detail. But that's also like a little bit dangerous because if you're exporting there, you got to make sure that you have the tail, uh, let's say, uh, like you gotta make sure that you have the tail uh, in the beginning because otherwise, like this one. So then you have to do something uh, more complicated and that's generally not worth it. So uh, try to avoid effects like what I just did. But something like that, you kind of have to make it kind of fade in. Uh, yeah, something like this. This is also like a way to do it and it's technically should sound pretty similar but you have to be way more nitpicky. And since I'm not really nitpicky, it often goes wrong. <laughs> Yeah, but at least like you didn't hear the cut there, so it, it kind of works, right? Um, yeah, there was a question in the back there as well. No, but uh, no, and I don't really know Audacity that well either. I'm, I'm, I'm also very stuck in my ways. So I learned this like 15 years ago, and I never <laughs> uh, managed to learn to some, something new. Um, but I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty sure YouTube would be fine. Uh, go to YouTube, find like a, a trans going from Audacity to Logic Pro, for instance. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a few t uh, tutorials and some useful guides. At least when I'm trying to learn uh, FMOD that I'm learning these days, which is like audio middleware. Uh, that's what I'm kind of are trying to, um, that's where I just go usually. Or go to forums and ask people. <laughs> and the question, uh, if I didn't repeat it, was uh, what's a good way to transition from using something like, uh, uh, <clears throat> well, excuse me, um, uh, Audacity, which is a free program, to something like Logic Pro that I'm using, or something like that. And yeah, the the answer would be, be I would uh, I would look for uh, guides. I'm pretty sure someone wrote a guide. Uh, I think it's hard hard not to find a guide on the internet at this point. Uh, one more question. Um, yeah. Uh, how do you avoid making like the same sounding uh, sound effect? Um, uh, so how I avoid making the same sound effect? Like, you know, uh, you mean in the sense that how does, how do I try to make that the next game I work on doesn't sound the same as the last one? Yes. Uh, well, that, that's, uh, we can kind of go back to the framing. Uh, and uh, like, for instance, when I, with Hidden Folks, uh, I just know that if I want to make a game that doesn't sound like Hidden Folks, I try to keep away from only mouth sounds, for instance. Uh, but that's a lot, a part of that is like they explore a lot of exploration. Uh, so for instance, I worked on a game came out last year called Dome Keeper, which is like a bubble defender. And uh, this is like a little example of the sounds that kind of was, um, uh, in the end, the kind of sounds that became the palettes, if that makes sense. So I knew that if it feels like this, So I basically know that I can kind of just listen to this and refer back to this and knowing that that's kind of what we agreed on was like a cool idea for the game. Uh, and if it feels like it could fit in with this, then I, then I just know that it's right for that game. Um, I generally feel that 
I could, you can make the same sound for three different games and people won't necessarily think or feel that it's the same sound because context is very important. Uh, and if the game looks and feels different, uh, the sound will also take on a very different meaning. Uh, but that's, that's the thing, like, I always just try to explore it by doing a frame uh, work and kind of by getting how I get there, I have no clue. I, I just do random stuff, uh, um, which is a bit not that easy to maybe <laughs> teach people, like, just try things, but uh, literally if you have enough time to just try, try our things for three days and just do a lot of random, like, what does this button do, which is literally half of what I do, uh, you'll end up with, like, a lot of um, uh, random things, and maybe suddenly, like, of, of 100 sounds you make, maybe 10 of them are like, oh, this is actually really good, and you kind of can retrace a little bit about what you did with them, and then you kind of know, so that's the kind of path for making those sounds. Like, for instance, uh, then you know that, oh, because uh, with these ones, everything that has this thing on it will kind of be the sound of the other game. Or uh, then you kind of know the, um, is it called pipeline? Yeah, I think it's called pipeline. Uh, your little pr private pipeline, if that makes sense. Uh, I think we have one more question, uh, probably, or maybe two. Yes? Well, I, I just want to make a comment, uh, that question about where you can learn stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's a website that's called Game Audio Learning. Game Audio Learning? Yeah, I think it's pretty cool because it has kind of a roadmap uh, of sites, like links that you can check. GameAudioLearning.com. Yeah. yeah. So it has like a roadmap and basically you can check what do you want to learn, what resources you have, and there's like tons and tons and tons of links and useful stuff. So yeah, this is something that you could check out. Wow, yeah, this is... This is really cool, actually. Yeah, thanks, thanks for that. Yeah, so basically, gameaudiolearning.com. Uh, wow. Yeah, okay, just from the looks of this, this looks very cohesive. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, wow, yeah, yeah, that looks good. Yeah, yes? What is something that you look for when you play games? Like, oh, this is great sound design. I love when people do this. Or maybe it's like cliche, but it's like, it's effectful. Oh, yeah. So, so your question is like, what do I look for when I play games like uh, with audio, I guess? The, yeah, I mean, if you're just playing any game uh, and you're like, oh, I love it when people do this, or I love putting this into my game, so something that you think is very effectful or like you like, uh, so it's very personalized. Yeah, I, I think, uh, so, so I guess what I, when I play a game and I find things that I like personally, uh, it would be anything that just feels uh, <laughs> like, for instance, I was playing, um, uh, and I'm bad with names, but it's, it's a very interesting game where you kind of you're having these ghosts and you're using the ghosts or demons as a yo-yo, and it's like a Japanese game, and they have this thing when you kind of go into the menu and you click apply, it's just this little high like ching, and I heard that sound, and I'm like, oh, that's so gutsy. Like, I could never dare putting something like that clear into a game like that. Oh, my God. And it doesn't fit with everything else. It just stands out there like a, like a, like a trooper or a, I don't know. Uh, I, I really, uh, I, I like, I like these days, I, I really like it when things are kind of a bit weird and not really fitting, but it fits still. Like, for instance, I was, I was talking about uh, some friends about this yesterday, but there's a game called Little Gator Game. Uh, and I'm referencing Little Gator game a lot because your little ga gator, you're, you're trying to get your sister to play with you and you're running around doing weird stuff. But uh, all the sounds are kind of like just, it doesn't really make sense. You jump and it's this weird little, little rattle uh, and, uh, and you shoot like little ninja stars that have made paper, but they also make a little like, sound and it's, it's kind of done weirdly and I wouldn't necessarily say like it's very juicy, but I just love it and nothing, nothing makes sense and, and, I, and I wish I could have done it. Uh, <laughs> And I, and I think like, I geek out over that a lot. Like, either they did something interesting, uh, or they did something which is just uh, stunning. Uh, like, for instance, I, I think um, uh, I, I thought the Mario Odyssey, uh, I was geeking out of the music system there. You know, like, uh, it's been talked about before, but you, know, you run around, and then you jump into a pole, and you become a little ball of lightning. And there's a little uh, arpeggio, like do -go -do -go -do -go -do -go -do -go, and it kind of follows the music around as you're doing it, and and these kind of things. I, I just, uh, uh, huh? Animal Crossing. Yeah, Animal Crossing as well. It is it's lovely, and you, you make a tone tune, and then everyone starts singing it, and their voice is like a tuba or like a. 
And uh, that, that creates me a lot of joy. Uh, I think in general, a lot of the Nintendo games are, I, I could generally say like a lot of Nintendo games are doing these really fun things where um, instead of having, uh, going bigger and having big orchestral scores and this and that, and things are pre-made, they rather have things that are more uh, uh, part of the mix and kind of playful. I also think like there's a game came out in uh, Denmark called Inglet, which also did a lot of these things. And it's, and it's, it's like proper, um, it kind of leads into what I think is unique about games, right? Because it's, it's, you're there and you're the player and you do something and the game responds to that. Uh, so I think, that, I think, yeah, I think actually that's something I geek out about a lot and I like, if, if I do something in the game, does something you know, uh, back to me in an audio way. Like for instance, there's a game called Black and White and it's pretty old by now, but uh, they had this very fun thing where, just, for fun, just for laughs, I think, but if you played late at night, uh, they would record the thousand, or, uh, the thousand most common names in the world, I think. And if you played late at night, you would hear whispers like, Martin, Martin. It's like very low in the mix. <laughs> it's just something like that. It's just, uh, I don't even know if it's made sense for the game, but I also, uh, and I don't know if I would think it would have been a good idea to have him, but, um, but uh, I, I really love like, that kind of stuff. Um, I think it's time for one more question, but then we should say it's done, right? And also, like, it's going to be a long jam, and if, you, and, and if anyone has questions, just poke me at, um, uh, at my Twitter, uh, um, which is this one. No. Do I actually have a, oh, I guess, a, yeah, here you go, yeah. This is my Twitter, uh, just po poke me on any time on just like, I'll, I'll be open to DMs or PMs or what it's called now. And uh, if there's any questions or if you want, just want me to come over and check what you're making, uh, uh, yeah, just uh, drop me a line really. And uh, thanks so much for uh, coming to listen to my talk. And the very last thing is a lot of these recordings I will go over and tomorrow I'll post them on Discord for everyone to use. So if you want some of your own clapping, your own sounds, uh, those will be available to use. And I mean, we're all kind of participated in together. So it's a little, uh, it's a little uh, good luck and I hope you have fun uh, gifts from me. So, and thanks all. So. <laughs>